I've never been a small phone kind of guy, and apparently neither has anyone else. Today we have the Zenfone 10, the supposed last living small flagship phone made by ASUS, which also makes the ROG gaming phones of which about 50% fail my durability test. I'm starting to think that the reason for this probably discontinued and not selling well Android smartphone isn't due to its size, but due to its lack of software updates. ASUS is only supporting this bad boy for two years, and that small size plus small support equals small sales. For reference, iPhones usually get about five years of software updates and Samsung and Google are both providing seven. So why would ASUS only give two? Do they not believe in this phone? Or is it not structurally sound enough to even last that long? We'll be able to find out shortly. It's interesting that our normal most scale of hardness paper doesn't even fit on the phone screen. This Zenfone 10 is a super tiny gizmo. Normally we see plastic screens or screen protectors start scratching at a level two or three, glass at a five or six, and sapphire at an eight or nine. The Zenfone 10 has no screen protector, and since it's using Gorilla Glass Victus, we start seeing scratches at a level six, with deeper grooves at a level seven. Super strange that the 32 megapixel front-facing selfie camera is scrunched all the way over on the left side of the screen, Still protected by glass though, the unsymmetrical placement doesn't bother me personally, but I imagine it might take some getting used to. There is a larger earpiece grill up top, but it appears to be securely attached to the phone and will not be falling out on its own. At least not within the two years of support that the phone receives. The sides are made from aluminum, with a fingerprint scanning power button, which we'll come back to later. The volume rocker is also aluminum, and is not removable from the device. The top of the Zenfone 10 is still metal, with a nice little headphone jack. Very interesting considering the IP68 water resistant rating. At the bottom of the phone we have our SIM card tray, 30 watt USB-C port, and the lower stereo loudspeaker. The SIM card tray does have a red rubber ring to facilitate the water resistance, and is dual sided for dual SIM cards. Speaking of dual objects, there are dual camera lenses on the back. The large upper circle is the main 50 megapixel camera, which supposedly has some crazy OIS going on. Hopefully we'll be able to see that in a second. And the lower circle is a 13 megapixel wide angle camera, both of which are protected with glass. One of my favorite parts of this phone though is the back rubberized textured plastic panel. I wish more phones were made like this. It's easy to hold, has less parts to break, and extremely easy to draw on. You might think that the national animal of Scotland is like a sheep or something since that's how they make all their bagpipes, but it turns out, and this is 100% true, the national animal of Scotland is a unicorn, which makes those of us from the rest of the world seem kind of boring. The screen of the Zenfone 10 is a respectable 5.9 inches, it's 144 hz 1100 nits, and 1080p, and it'll last for about 30 seconds under the heat from my lighter. But alas, the Super AMOLED screen succumbs to the heat and is permanently damaged. I would recommend against taking a lighter to your screen. As far as the fingerprint scanner goes, I was able to set my fingerprint, but after being set, it's still pretty slow to unlock. And after adding some additional scratches, it maintained its prior slowness, but is still functioning. Now for the bin test. I was rather optimistic for this one, since the smaller form factor and thick frame should help with the structural integrity, and indeed it does, even when bent from the front and the back. It helps that there are no antenna lines in the middle of the frame to compromise that structural integrity, and even though no one wants to buy it, the Zenfone 10 survives my durability test. Thumbs up for that. If I had to pick my favorite part of this whole phone though, it would be how incredibly simple it is to get inside. Definitely a contender for the most repairable smartphone of the year. The plastic back can be very simply separated with just a razor knife. No heat, no cracked glass, just a gloriously shiny milled camera lens housing. You can see the machining marks on the underside of the lens. ASUS put nine black screws in the top of the phone housing and five silver screws holding down the loudspeaker over the charging port. There's a 15 watt wireless charging coil that comes off with those upper plastics. The lower loudspeaker has a waterproofing mesh and light gray rubber gasket, but does not appear to have any balls, however. Just a small little ventilation hole. I'll unplug two of the long extension ribbon cables connecting the motherboard to the KB board. If anyone can tell us what KB means, that would be great. The battery is also unplugged at this point, and I'll remove the dual SIM card tray, which allows the tiny KB board to come away from the phone. 
leaving the charging port ribbon and the minuscule coin style vibrator motor still inside the foam body. The battery can also come out at this point, no magic pull tabs, just adhesive gentle enough to still be removable, which is great news for the five people who ordered this phone. The 4,300 mAh capacity battery can very easily be replaced with just a small screwdriver and a pry tool. I'll pop off the fingerprint scanner ribbon, the display ribbon, and remove the metal foil over the headphone jack and front-facing camera, both of which unplug like little Legos. The 32 megapixel front-facing camera does not have OIS, but one of the coolest optical image stabilization systems that we've ever seen is in the 50 megapixel front-facing camera. This does not only have a circular OIS system, but a gimbal OIS system. This not only stabilizes images on a flat plane, but can also compensate for angular jiggles. The complex algorithms required to match this hardware to a final stabilized video have got to be pretty mind-blowing. The lower 13 megapixel wide-angle camera does not have OIS, but there is a dollop of pink thermal paste underneath to help dissipate the heat from the camera units, because they're definitely doing more work than most cameras we've ever seen. The last thing to come out after removing one more screw is the motherboard, a dual stacked unit with a bit of pink thermal paste here and there, and we can see the copper vapor chamber tucked between the screen and the frame. The Zenfone 10 is an incredibly repairable phone, with replacement parts easy to find all over the internet. A new screen, for example, currently costs about 130 bucks on Amazon. The last thing I want to point out before we see if the small flagship is still alive is the charging port. Albeit water resistant, it does have a little white water damage indicator sticker placed right at the opening. Asus has also placed another white water damage indicator sticker next to the SIM card tray opening to tattle on you if the phone ever gets wet. So yeah, while small flagships across the board are going the way of the dodo, and appear in the wild as often as Scotland's national animal, this last crusader did an exceptional job at being durable, structural, and repairable. And even after a teardown, it still turns on. Nice work, Zenfone 10. May your remaining days be filled with the quiet confidence of a job well done. Thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.